Hi there, my name is Mariela Salgado and I'm here with Dr. Sherry Jackson from Community Health Network. She's her lead pediatrician and she will be here answering today questions regarding telemedicine for children and how we're helping the community during this time. Dr. Jackson, what are we doing to meet the pediatric needs of the community at this moment? Hi, Mariella. I'm so happy to be speaking with you today. Right now, in an effort to decrease exposure and to keep people at home, we are offering pediatric telehealth, telemedicine visits to all of our patients, both established and new. So, Dr. Jackson, what is pediatric telehealth? So, telehealth and telemedicine just simply means that the provider is not in the same place during the visit with the patient. We can still address patients' concerns, do limited physical exams, order diagnostic testing, and treat the patient all using a smartphone in face-to-face -face, real time. I must admit I was a little hesitant when we started doing this. Pediatricians typically have relied on the physical exam because our patients can't always tell us what's wrong. But I have found even with the telehealth visits, by careful observation and questioning, we're still able to give a quality visit to the family, and they are very happy with the results. Of course, sometimes patients do have to be seen, but when they do have to be seen, doing the telemedicine visit, visit first decreases time spent in the office, and also there are fewer patients in the office in general. Parents appreciate the peace of mind of being able to have a quality visit in the comfort of their own home. Our younger patients are a little bit camera shy at first, but we work through that. So Dr. Jackson, what is the difference between a well child and a sick visit? So in the past, our sick visits and our well child visits were seen in the same location. But with the current situation, we have completely separated and we have separate sites for our sick visits and our well child visits. So now our vulnerable populations like our newborns, our kids with chronic disease and special needs, and even our infants, children, and teenagers who are coming to get vaccinations to stay healthy, they can all come to a site that's protected from children that are sick. During this crisis, how are children being impacted by COVID-19? So children react based on their development and level of understanding. But all children, even infants and toddlers, can detect stress in their caregivers. And you may notice differences in behavior, sleeping, and eating habits. School-aged children are having to learn online or have parents as surrogate teachers. They are not able to socialize with peers or other family members, and they're not able to do their extracurricular acti activities. Teenagers and older kids are able to see media reports which may be overwhelming or scary. It's really important that parents monitor what they're watching and discuss it with them in, at age appropriate levels in a way that it doesn't seem to engender panic or anxiety. It's really important to let kids express their feelings about what's going on and be able to guide them. During this time it's important to stick to a routine and try to spend quality time with your children. When they look back on this years later, instead of thinking that this is a scary time, we hope that they just remember all the board games you played, all the books you read to them, the time you spent in the backyard, and they just remember that they made some really good memories. What are your recommendations for parents to prevent um, exposure to their kids? The number one recommendation is stay at home. If you have to leave, you want to make sure to do the social distancing, which means to stay six feet away from other people. You want to wash your hands with soap and water for 20 seconds. Parents should teach their children to wash their hands while doing the alphabet song. You can also use sanitizer if washing hands if water is not available. And above all, keep kids away from people who are sick. What plans do we accept for telemedicine or inpatient visits? We accept CHIP, Medicare, Medicaid, most insurance plans, and self-payment. What can parents do if they're concerned about their child? They should call the office at 281-824-1480 or visit our website. Thank you, Dr. Jackson. Thank you.